Professor Solange, welcome to India. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, so, in terms of all of this work that you've accomplished and your career spanning more than nearly 30 years, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the recent terms that you've coined, such as uh, techno civilization, uh, and a little bit more about the new kind of power that has emerged in the last decades, uh, which which you call the cyber power. Um, uh, would you please tell us a little bit about the economic inequality such a power could create? For instance, uh, India has traditionally been a country which is more human uh, power driven, uh, but with the advent of automation, this can potentially create these inequalities uh, in terms of uh, the, the payload and the work. Okay, thank you for this good question. Uh, techno civilization is the fact that we are surrounded by technology from our birth to our death. And we are also information system. We produce data, we generate data, and all our activities are related upon ICT technology. And more and more we use technology to behave, to communicate, to do business, to do well, to engage conflicts, to communicate and so on. So the problem is how to master this technology and the entity that the control of the technology, the know-how that has the infrastructure that provides the services, that provides security solutions, have power among, uh, on the other people that doesn't master this technology. And there is a new philosophy, a new paradigm of uh, economy. It's about turning data into dollars and then a huge market to be exported. Uh, and we sell more and more services to get profit. So all we are doing in our life is to gain profit, to have profit, to have power, and technology could be the means to do it. And as you have um, said, uh, we, we are in a paradigm shift. And the problem is the globalization of it, because all the nations, all the states, all the country are not at the same level of, of adoption of ICT technology. It's also a matter of philosophy, of religion, of a cultural approach. And it's not because part of the globe are doing that, that everybody has to do the same thing at the same time. We have to learn how to adopt this technology to answer local needs with uh, local um, exigence. And that will be the m biggest challenge in this 21th century, is uh, to, to take the good advantage of what could provide ICT technology. And be aware that this kind of approach that we have in Western Europe, for example, or in the United States, it's some kind of colonization. You know, you take the, the data from the people, you process the, the data outside the country, and you sell them against services. For me, it's like colonization. You take the resources in the country, in the land, you export them, you modify them, and you resell them very high price to the, the people. So I think for India, the real challenge is to to have the opportunity in land to develop the, the high city culture, to have the engineers that can export the data, that can provide the service. Don't adopt, for example, free services like Facebook can offer, uh, <laughs> because they will kill the market. You have to, uh, to take into control uh, your market and to give the opportunity to Indian company to develop what they need for the people in, com in this country. And net neutrality is very important because there could be uh, differences of approach of economic advantage for people from big company abroad that have already all the services and can impose the vision of the world and the kind of services you need. But what you need, you know what you need, not me, I don't know what you need. But perhaps I can help to, uh, to define or to propose something, but I cannot choose uh, instead of yours. Uh, Indian people, Indian country, government have to know what is good for the country for the people and it could be India is a very huge country that can be differences in, in the area and we don't need to go at the same uh, speed on the high city revolution so be aware of that you have the data you have the knowledge you have the person and perhaps you have to choose what is good for you and take advantage of the experience abroad and everything online is not everything good and Think about that. Have time to uh, how to adapt your cultural heritage and what you can enforce with ICT technology and what you have to present. And freedom is something very important, as everybody know. Everybody know. And for the state and the population, is to to be aware, to be able to master the technology, to control them. It's about state sovereignty, independence, and so on. 
Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. These are these are very critical insights uh, for all of us. Now, I'd like to know what really drives you. You've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, Switzerland recognizes you um, heavily. You're one of the top 20 intellectual people in Switzerland. Uh, what really drives you? I think I like to learn, I like to understand, and I like to share. So, um, because perhaps I have a woman and a, a mother, I would like to do something for my children and for the next generation and preserve what is good in life and to promote the happiness in our society. So, I think it's very important to choose the technologies that will help us to be better.